Good day, everyone. Trainer Maxim with you. Thank you very much for joining me for this uh, episode, my next podcast. Today, we're going to talk about the coordination and balance, how it works in your brain and why it is important. As always, I thank everyone who supports my channel just by being with us, by commenting, by sharing ideas, by watching videos. Thank you so much. Thank you for all the super thanks I keep receiving. Greatly appreciate it. And now uh, I've got support angels for my channel. Thank you. Thank you very much. You all guys made the journey possible for me. Thank you. Now let's talk about the coordination and balance. Remember how in my last videos we discussed the importance of the body awareness and perception. Body awareness, it was about uh, your brain being able to determine how to create very efficient motor algorithms based on the information from the environment about the levers, about the environment itself, and so on and so forth. And the perception, it was uh, about being able to see the movement correctly so that the, uh, so that the brain could put all those algorithms together in order to comprise a very good and efficient movement based on your good vision. Now, the balance and coordination are all based on those two. Coordination simply means that uh, now, since you know your body well and you see the movement correctly, now you can determine how to place your body in a specific position. I know it sounds very, very simple, but often, you know from your own experience, when you think in your mind that your body is doing that or another movement in a certain way and you do believe that it happens, but your trainer is telling you, well, actually it's not happening, that's what's happening. And sometimes when you look at the video of uh, your movement, which was recorded by your trainer, you can definitely see, let's say, that your neutral spine you thought was neutral, was not neutral at all and the pelvis was uh, floating to the uh, to the left or to the right while you were performing squats without you being aware of this. So that was a, an example of uh, poor coordination. Poor coordination means that sometimes we assume that our body moves in a certain way. And in our brain, all our perceptions are telling us that yes, our body is moving in a certain way. But the reality is different. The reality that the body deviates slightly from that path and starts moving to the left or to the right without us knowing it. So that is where the uh, coordination can, comes handy. And we need to sometimes recalibrate our perception, recalibrate our, um, our visual, visualization of the body so that we can make sure that the body moves in precisely the way we think it moves in our mind. And that is coordination. The coordination is the ability to see the movement internally with your mind exactly in the same way in which the body physically moves during the implementation of that movement. And once that uh, skill has been achieved, now you can work more effectively on developing balance because balance is based on coordination. Because balance, it's a certain state of the body when you, using your good coordination, placing the body parts in the way where minimal muscle, uh, muscle activity allows, allows you activities, allows you to place the body parts in the way which would be staying in that position for a prolonged period of time, your desirable position. Whether you're doing the handstands or one leg balance or etc., you have to run the body in a certain way using your muscle stabilizers or other muscle groups to cancel to cancel the effect uh, of other forces such as gravity or centrifugal force or any other force uh, forces you might be exposed to at that moment. Uh, those forces need to be uh, countered or cancelled by the muscular engagement so that you can easily stand on one foot or two feet or on one hand, two hand handstands and etc. So that is the skill of balance. When you can run your body in a certain way using all your senses, senses using your skill of um, uh, coordination to fix the body in the position you desire the body, you desire the body to stay uh, for a certain time. Now, I want to, I want to mention that, uh, that balance can be efficient and inefficient. Efficient ba balance means that you're using very little muscular efforts. 
because your body awareness is so good, you really know what the body is doing. Your internal vision of the movement coincides with the physical movements. There are no deviations whatsoever. And when is the case, you can create a very sufficient balance. When with minimum muscular efforts and with high precision, you place the body parts, you stack the body parts in the way which gives you, uh, which gives you a great balance. In efficient balance, it's when you need a greater muscular efforts in order to create the balance. What I mean by this, let's say you enter in the handstands and you think that your spine is neutral, your shoulders are open, and so on and so forth. But in reality, it's not the case. In reality, your shoulders are not so open, not, not, uh, not brought really behind the ears. Your spine is a little bit crunched. Uh, you over-engage in the core, for example. That will force your body to lean slightly forward into a planche position, which would require you to use your shoulder muscles uh, to the greater extent. So you will need greater efforts in order to get this balance. And yes, it will be possible, but it will cost you more muscular efforts, uh, which, uh, which would mean inefficiency at some point, because you will not be able to stay in this, uh, in this position for a prolonged period of time due to simply huge demand of uh, muscular engagement. And that's an efficient balance. When our body perception is not uh, great, uh, coordination is lacking, etc., you still can find the balance. It's absolutely possible. Uh, that's why we have banana handstands. That's why we have wobbly uh, squats. It's possible, but it's inefficient. So we ideally would like to work towards the state when we can run our body so precisely that we can create the official balance. And by the way, notice how I use the word create, not to find the balance, but precisely create, because there is a big difference. Everyone can find a balance. You can, you can tilt uh, even a hammer in the way which would be uh, balanced for a couple of seconds. So yes, you can jump into the handstands position and find the balance for two, three seconds. But the uh, sheer fact that you found this balance means that it's not your balance. You did not create the, that balance. You did not create it by using your uh, senses, your body awareness, your perception, your, your skill of coordination. You just found this balance by luck. And that's the uh, big predicament with the handstands. When, when some people try to get handstands, they, they're celebrating balance for three, five seconds, but they're not really in control of that balance. They just lean the body in a certain way which provided them with balance, but the body is actually on its way to being unbalanced. And only for that three, five seconds, you're balanced. It's a good start, of course, but we need to improve on this to make sure that we really the ones who created the balance by filling our body in, uh, in the way which would allow us to use all the body parts in a very precise way to create the balance. So, and that's how we want to develop the, uh, the balance uh, uh, based on uh, based on our skills. We want the balance to be efficient. And back to the uh, efficiency of the balance. When the balance is efficient, it means that you can stay in that balance, in that state for 20, 30 seconds or for one minute because you don't require a lot of muscular efforts. And when it's the case, now you can build on this balance because not only you created it, but now this balance is efficient. Now you can uh, build other elements based on that balance. You can bring the legs apart, you can move the body in a certain way, you can do the rotation, you can do whatever you want because it's efficient and you will be sparing your joints, your uh, connective tissue. The uh, efficiency is great, therefore the uh, safety of the position is great, less, uh, less uh, injuries, uh, injury prone uh, state and so on. So very important to create efficient balance, not using a lot of uh, muscular activities. And further, we can differentiate the balance into two categories. We want to be uh, good at static balance and at dynamic balance. Static balance, I think you got the idea. It's when you take the handstand position or one, uh, one foot uh, stance, that's the static. You just don't move, you try to breathe normally and etc. But dynamic balance has a greater value for us. Greater value because uh, every time you walk, every time you do hike, uh, hiking, or anything, anything activity, or anything, any activity of the kind, you have to make sure that your active balance is great. So the brain needs to compute the new position every time you change it 
to create a new balance by engaging new muscular uh, muscle groups uh, by coordinating their work again using your uh, superior skills of body coordination, uh, body awareness and perception, uh, your strength at some point, uh, to be able to um, maintain that balance dynamically. And that is even more important than static, because we can build on the dynamic balance greatly. We can do handstands walking, handstands uh, jumping even, or handstands legs apart, and so on and so forth. And it also will give you a lot of benefits with your everyday activity, such as walking, running, hiking. It's very important because often our dynamic balance is compromised and we use inefficient balance, which uses a lot of muscular efforts in order to stay in upright position. And that's when we start having problems with our ankles or knees or lower back, when we overload the lower back muscles because they're participating in, in, the, uh, in the process of creating the the dynamic balance and too much of the lower back muscles are being used so be uh, by by doing so we are overusing them because our balance is inefficient and we want to improve on this and now the final thing i want to say about the balance is that uh, a lot of times we think that the balance is a universal skill for some reason we think that a gymnast or a ballerina or a contortionist they all have great balance, overall balance. Well, sadly, I wish it were true, but the balance is not a universal skill. If you have never done any uh, that or another activity, it doesn't mean that just because you're good with handstands, you're going to be very good with the other skill. You still need to practice the other skill. Let's say, in my example, I'm good with balance on hands, on rings, on bars, and etc. But once I tried the slack rope walking, that was impossible for me. I couldn't make uh, a single step on that rope. However, the guy who showed me that, uh, that activity was so confident and smiling and walking, but I couldn't because I lacked the practice. And for that activity, my brain needed different motor algorithms, different, uh, different ways to engage my heat flexors, to engage my core, to engage my lower back muscles, and so on and so forth. So any balance requires some practice before you achieve but uh, achieve good state of that balance. And of course, good body awareness, uh, good, uh, good perception, good coordination you have from gymnastics or martial arts or any other uh, athletic activities might help you to get it faster, but uh, it still needs to be trained. It still needs to be developed. That's why my message for today for you, everyone, is to include as many different balance exercises into your workout routine as you possibly can. I mean, of course, don't overload it with thousands of the drills, but uh, stick to five, seven of them. One leg balance, uh, <clears throat> unilateral uh, exercises, such as uh, bench press with one dumbbell on one side. Um, those activities are very important because with those activities, you can create a better body awareness, a better, better perception of the movement and better, uh, better coordination. So it's very important not only to do um, bilateral exercises when you do the bench press with two arms or two legs, but also important to do one leg pistol squats, uh, one leg stance, uh, one arm bench press, not, not with uh, great weights, but just enough to be challenged so that we can develop a better sense of balance or better balance. Because again, remember the balance is not a universal quality. And why the balance, uh, balance matters, it, it's first of all good for your Instagram account, that's for sure. You can take awesome videos, but it also saves you a lot of injuries. When your sense of balance is great with the deadlifts or squats or even bench press or handstands, it means that you're not going to overload some, uh, some other body parts, such as your wrist, ankles and, uh, uh, and knees you will be sparing them based on your efficient balance. Because remember, if the balance is efficient, you're not using a lot of muscular efforts. And uh, imagine you're in the squat and your balance is inefficient. It means you have to invest a lot of muscular efforts into that balance. And on top of that, you need the same muscular efforts from the same muscular groups of your hips to do the squats. Now there is a dilemma. Well, I kind of need the muscles to do the squats, but I also need the same muscles to balance while I'm, while I'm doing the squats. And of course, you will observe some stagnation with the weights of your squats or any other exercises, bench press. 
because you're simply using the, uh, the uh, muscular efforts on balancing while doing these exercises versus investing the same amount of muscular efforts into the, uh, uh, into the extra weight because the body awareness is, might, might, be, might be lacking, might be the spinal alignment is not there, might be hips is twisted, might be uh, maybe something else happening. So the balance is very important for injury prevention and also good balance will help you with, uh, with progressions, with progressions with any strength skill, not to mention gymnastic skills or health seat or anything of the kind. So I encourage you to include balance exercises. You can do that either at the beginning of your training, just to warm up your, uh, your perception, your uh, nervous system, or at the end, or both. You can do two movements, uh, two balance movements before the squats, great idea. And as a cool down, uh, after all the exercises you have done at the gym that day. And no need to overload yourself with the balance. Just try to really uh, use small weights to uh, absolutely feel your body during that, uh, during that movement so that you can have some time to think and analyze. Otherwise, if you overload your body, you will be just surviving without analyzing and trying to find the balance. And finding the balance is not the goal. We want to create the balance, to use our own ability and skills of perception to create the balance, not to find it, but create. And uh, you will see, once, uh, once you start, uh, start doing some balance exercises, it will greatly improve your uh, fitness routine. So I think you got, got the point about the balance and coordination, got the message. Please try to do that uh, during your training sessions and let me know how it went. That is it for today, everyone. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for listening to Trainer Maxim with you. Go enjoy your day. Thank you. Bye-bye.